On today's video, we are talking about steaks. That is one thing I know quite well. And Chef Gordon Ramsay has a guide to buying the perfect steak. Enough talking about it, let's go. If you want the ultimate brunch, you can't do any better than start with a perfect steak. And one man who really knows his steak is master butcher, Danny Lidgate. Steak is my favorite type of meat. And I think it's really good <laughs> Mine to too. enjoy different varieties of steak. When choosing a steak that you want, you need to look at exactly what you want out of it. For my ultimate steak sandwich, I use the fillet because it's the most tender. Interesting choice for a filet mignon for a steak sandwich. You know, filet mignon doesn't have a lot of marbling. It doesn't have a lot of richness, but there are other things you can do to bring richness to the steak sandwich. I'm curious to see what Chef Wardham is gonna do it because if there's one thing this steak is good for is for its tenderness. The fillet does the least amount of work than all the other muscles. It's tucked away in the rib cage. This means that when you find a fillet, it's incredibly soft like butter. It's the most expensive, but you get what you pay for. It is the most expensive. You do get what you paid for. And a lot of people say that filet mignon has no flavor. That's wrong, everybody. Filet mignon has a lot of flavor. It doesn't have a lot of fat, but it has flavor. This would be the rump section where the rump comes from. Take the bone out and what you're left with is a wonderful steak. Rump steak, characteristically, a little bit tougher than the sirloin or a little bit chewier than the ribeye, but really strong flavor for the steak. Another incredible steak that comes from the rump is picanha. However, since it's also known as the cap sirloin, that one is also very tender. That's why it is my favorite cut of steak. It's as tender as a filet mignon, but it also has a good amount of fat. Delicious. Again, when buying rump, look for the marbling, try and get some fat covering on the steak. You can always cut it off after it's cooked. Beautiful. You can always cut the fat out after it's cooked. You need oil to cook the steak properly. You can't just cook it with nothing. So why not use what's already there, everybody? Cook with the fat and then later choose to eat the amount of fat you wanna eat. With the sirloin, which is basically the back of the animal, a nice sirloin like this. I want you to notice one thing on this video here real quick. Pay attention to this cut, everybody. You see how the fat is quite yellow? That's a sign of an animal that has been grain fed for a while. In Europe, it's quite common to see this kind of fat. Here in the United States, we do what's called a grain finish. Grain finished is the way to go for me. It tastes a lot better, everybody. The fat is softer, it's more delicious. Guess what Japanese Wagyu A5 is fed on? Exactly, grain. Oh, actually, they also feed in some other weird stuff. Check it out. So this is the feed that they give to the Wagyu cow, and it's the byproduct of mirin. And I've just learned it's good for human consumption as well. One of my all-time favorites, a dish that always creates a stir, is the daddy of all brunches, steak sandwiches. I 100% agree, everybody. There's nothing better than a steak sandwich. I'm curious to see how he's gonna do his. This is the ultimate steak sandwich. You want the Rolls Royce of beef. Yes. It has to be fillet. It doesn't have to be a filet mignon because it's extremely expensive. He's also using the Chateaubriand, which is the most expensive part of that whole tenderloin. But let's keep watching. Now, season it beautifully. I like to open up the top of the pepper mill to increase the size of the pepper in the steak so it gives that bit of heat. Whenever you do that, the grains of the actual pepper is gonna be a lot larger. I'm not a huge fan of it, so I like to have a very fine grind. Let me know which one you prefer. You just roll now, nicely, all the way around. Great technique, yep. Now, slice the garlic in half, pan nice and hot. Yep. Olive oil in. Olive oil to sear the steak. Uh... That's not my favorite, let's just say it, okay? For a few reasons. Olive oil has a strong flavor, okay? Whenever you use it, you're also adding that flavor to the steak. I much rather sear the steak with a very high temperature oil, such as grapeseed oil, avocado oil, and they're also neutral in flavor. If you do love the flavor of olive oil on a steak, add it towards the end the way the Italians do it. Hold the steak and just place it into the pan. Don't drop it at the front of the pan. Look, Very nice. Forward, cook the back of the steak, dual purpose. Now roll it back and sear it underneath. Time, fry that time. I want to hear it. We're not looking for a lot of color. Ooh, I disagree with that a little bit. If you are able to achieve the color quickly and fast without overcooking the steak, then it's all good. A crust equals flavor. So just. 
That thing is gray, sad. I don't like that color. Turn it back down and steer the other end in. Lift up your thyme, place it on top of the garlic. There. Lift up your fillet and sit that on. That's a great technique. Oh. Of your garlic. Butter in. Butter in the end, very the nice. Tilt the pan gently. Yep. Lift up and baste. That is sorry the amount of butter that Chef Gordon Ramsay is using. He's using so little there is not enough butter, everybody. I will put the whole chunk in there. Baste it. You got to use more butter. I've got that scented garlic, thyme flavor. Almost no butter. <laughs> the steak's going to cook evenly because it's sat on a little, a little bed in the oven for eight to ten minutes. For the relish, you think of a steak sandwich, you think of a sort of nice heated tomato relish. That's a great point. You always got to have something extra to go along with your steak, regardless of what it is that you enjoy. Our relish sounds fantastic. To make the relish? Onions, chili. That's, that got to smell incredible. Generous with the olive oil. I want a nice sort of rich, nice, silky relish. Very nice. From there. Oh, that looks amazing. Take your tomatoes. Now, put your salt in. Pepper. And then... Oh, that looks the, beautiful. The, take a wooden spoon and just sort of... Only salt and pepper, that's all you need. Once the skin's blister, yep. the whole tomato just starts to release all that really nice, sweet texture. A little <laughs> teaspoon of sherry vinegar. Gives that nice, acidic balance to the sweetness. I love that he's adding the vinegar for acidity in there on the steak sandwich. It's going to be a perfect combination. You have the fattiness of the filet mignon. Hopefully, he's going to add some type of mayo sauce or something like that. And then this will bring the richness down, balancing everything. Let's sprinkle that basil in there. Mm. That, looks, that looks great. Show me the meat. There she is. You see the crust, everybody? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I said, maybe, maybe it's just me. I prefer a much more pronounced crust. Just baste one more time. I love that he's using sort that butter. Touch is quite soft in the center, so it's... See the little pieces of black pepper on the top over there? I can guarantee you it's still going to be slightly hard and it's going to give some crunchiness when you're eating the sandwich. That's why I like my black pepper so much more finely ground. A lot of people might think that you're going to burn it if it's super fine. It doesn't burn, everybody, because the juices of the steak will prevent from that happening. So it's just coming up to mid-rare. Let it rest the same time you cooked it. I disagree with that. A Chateaubriand cooks a lot faster. It looks like he seared it for four or five minutes and then he finished it off in the oven for another eight minutes. That's about 13 minutes to 15 minutes. If you leave it resting for that long, it's gonna be cold. I would leave it for the maximum 10 minutes, nothing more than that. But regardless, do let it rest for at least a little bit. To make my sandwich, I'm gonna char grill some sliced chipata bread. Season it nicely. Oh, ciabatta. I love that bread. Did you see? He seasoned his bread. Damn, I don't do that. I'm gonna start doing that now. Pan, nice and hot. Bread in, push it down. I hate these pans that give you grill marks, everybody, because in the end, it's just burnt. Much rather a nice golden brown color on your bread. It's not my favorite thing to do, but let's see. And look at this here. It is stunning. See how much juices there still is on the pan? No matter what, you're gonna lose it whenever you cook something medium rare. So why wait 15 minutes to cut the steak? 10 minutes is good enough. Slice it gently. Looks very nice. That's why he's the boss, everybody. It looks absolutely delicious, but he could use a better crust. A little bit of mayonnaise. Spread that at the back of the spoon. Very nice. On both sides. Lettuce. Lettuce to keep it healthy. Beautiful slice of beef. Mm -hmm. Relish on top of that beef. And just slice the sandwich in half. Very nice. There's only one mm. problem with this sandwich. It looks so small, Beautiful. everybody. I could eat 20 of now those. That's what I call a steak sandwich. That looks amazing, everybody. Besides from getting a nice, beautiful crust and basting a lot more with butter, those are the only two things I would have done it differently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Remember, everything I use is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.